guys. Cool. Um, yeah, so my name's Yash. Um, I work at Cursor on the engineering team. And um, I'll apologize in advance because we don't have anyone who, work, who has slides. So I had to just kind of put these together on my own. So, uh, you know, bear with the very poor design. But anyways, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we approach context generally. Wait, Yash, you're missing one key point <laughs> here. Yes, and um, I have been working on memories um, by myself at Cursor for the past few months, just prototyping, and we're kind of making our way out of the woods, so I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so Yash isn't bragging for himself as much as he wants to. I asked him, how many people are working at memory and Cursor? And he goes, I'm the only one. <laughs> so we're talking about a $9 billion IDE here, where memory is a load-bearing process for it, and Yash is the one that's working on it. So very excited to see this. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, so I think like very similar to um, what other folks have touched upon, uh, when you try and look at context as this big kind of word, I think it gets really, really confusing and muddy. And so we kind of tried to break it down into three different categories for our agent. Um, and obviously this is very much an art and not a science, so, uh, and it's very product dependent as well. But for us, we kind of have three different types. So you have directional, and the idea there is uh, when you le uh, present a high level task to the agent, um, usually, like, it will kind of begin its search um, wide, and directional context will allow it to narrow that search early and earlier and kind of get to the relevant set of files as quickly as it can. Um, the next thing is operational, and that's kind of runbook related. So how do I deploy a service? How do I make edits in this particular file? What are the conventions? Um, and so we have already created cursor rules for that, which are written by a human, but the model will basically fetch them when they're relevant to context and use that to guide its edits. Um, and the last thing is a little bit more fuzzy. It's kind of similar to the holistic theory of mind that Sam mentioned earlier. Um, and that's kind of like a behavioral context where you want the model to act in a certain way when it's um, going back and forth with you. And so we had this concept of user rules um, where you could specify, okay, please only speak to me in Spanish or something like that. Um, but to be honest, most of our efforts so far has been just focused on the first category of code base search. And recently we've kind of been branching out, which is what I've been working on. Um, and so the goal of memories was, is basically to augment all three of these types of contexts with the idea that, you know, you can rely less and less on cursor rules, less and less on user rules, and maybe even less and less on code base search once we've learned more and more about how you interact with the agent. Okay. Um, and yeah, so like most things at Cursor, we start with prototypes. So I've been prototyping memories for about a month and a half now. Um, and our general principle was to start pretty conservative. And the reason for that is because um, Cursor is a coding agent where the user generally likes to feel in control. And one of the most frustrating things about using Cursor is when it kind of goes off the rails and stops listening, uh, which I'm sure if any of you have used it, you must have experienced it before. Um, and so one worry and one thing that we saw a lot during prototyping is if the model gets an incorrect memory about your code base or about how you like to run the terminal or anything really, um, it's a really frustrating experience um, because the model will refuse to do certain things or will do things incorrectly. And then when you try and tell it like, hey, this isn't the right way, it will actually like double down because it's like, oh no, I have a memory, like this has got to be correct. Uh, and so I'll get to that part later, but basically when we started prototyping, um, we began with kind of two parallel approaches that I tried out. So one we called like the sidecar approach, and this is where uh, the model doesn't t call any tools to generate memory, but rather in the background, as you interact with the agent, we kind of pull relevant parts of context into a smaller model, and that smaller model makes a decision on what to save, if to save anything at all, and also what to update in the existing uh, knowledge that it has. Um, and then the second approach we tried was the tool call approach, where you just give the model a tool, call it update memory, um, and the model kind of, as it detects you interacting with the agent, will decide on its own, you know, this memory is incorrect, I'm gonna update it, or I'm gonna delete it, or I'm gonna add something new. So in the second one, the mo okay, so in the sidecar approach, you basically have a small model listening to your conversation. And at some points, you basically send the conversation off to that small model. And the small model makes the decision completely independent of the main, of the main thread. Um, and then versus the tool call approach is all in the main thread. Um, Uh, the sidecar doesn't necessarily have to be an agent. Like, you can choose to give it tools if you want to, but you could also, we've tried, we tried both. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, feel free to interrupt me with questions at any point. Um, no, 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 that was great. I'm sure other people had questions, too. 
Um, and so yeah, I'll start with pool call memories. Um, this was definitely the simplest thing to, e to implement. Um, and so you just have the model kind of reflect um, and decide when the user has expressed something to it that it determines is like worth remembering. And in that case, um, it will create a memory itself. Um, and so what's interesting is we noticed like as I was prototyping over the past few months, like model capabilities have improved in such a way that this is like a legit approach where you can just give the tool to the model and it works. Um, and so specifically Sonnet 4 and Opus 4 as well are really good at instruction following. And they've also been RL'd specifically on Anthropic's definition of memories. But the tricky thing is Anthropic actually has a different def definition of memories than what we have. And it kind of goes to the point that everyone has, you need to decide what memories are for your product. You can't just think of it in the abstract. Um, and what Sonnet wants to do with memories is kind of create a task log. So you can see that in like their Pokemon example where, they, where the agent kind of keeps a log of all the things that it's tried to do. Um, and so when we just gave, the, gave Sonnet 4 a memory tool, it would try and save like task specific memories, which is in coding agents, like at least for us, it's kind of the opposite of what you want because you don't want to remember like the things that were specific to one particular conversation. You want to remember the things that were generalizable and will be useful in a future like completely unrelated generation. Um, and to that end, uh, we've now like kind of tried to keep Sonnet 4 and keep um, Opus 4 from generating new memories, but they are still really good at reflection. So uh, if the model has an incorrect memory and the user just in natural language kind of expresses disagreement, then they're really good at just updating their memory themselves without having to do anything fancy in the background. And the second approach is the sidecar, which I was talking about. And so I spent weeks iterating here on the prompting. It was like a whole roller coaster of up and down where I kind of lost hope and got hope back and kind of settled in somewhere where I'm happy. Um, and the biggest thing that I was fighting is this concept of like a task specific memory. Because in a coding agent interaction, probably 90 plus percent of what you're saying to the agent is not worth remembering. It's very specific to the task that you've given the agent. Um, and so, Probably in most conversations, there isn't even anything worth remembering um, for this particular type of memory. It depends on what you want to remember. Um, and so I tried a bunch of different approaches to basically keep the model from focusing too much on task-specific things. Um, and similarly, like with the uh, tool calls, it kind of changed as the models got better. So um, you know, back when Claude 3.7 was the latest model, um, I was kind of prompting it super aggressively like giving it a bunch of examples. Um, and it sort of worked, but it also wasn't super great. And a lot of things kind of slipped through the cracks. Um, and with the newer set of reasoning models, um, essentially you can just kind of give them like a very brief description of the problem. Uh, you can lay it out very, you have to lay it out very precisely. Like every word will matter, but you don't actually need that much text. You don't need that many examples and they'll do a pretty good job at the task. Um, so eventually, like, we didn't end up with a super complicated system for the sidecar model. It was very simple. Um, and the last thing was evaluation. So um, evaluating memories, in our experience, has been really tough because it's the type of feature that you notice when it's taken away, not when it's like, necessarily there. And so um, you can try and think of evals where like, the memories would help you get to the solution faster. But in some sense, it's kind of cheating because you come up with the examples such that the memories are useful. And so when we evaluated the memories sidecar model, like I focused it basically on the quality of the memory generated, not on the retrieval side, and specifically mostly just filtering out these task-specific memories. Um, and so we ended up in a place where we were pretty happy with um, the quality of memories that were getting generated. And then the next big question was kind of UX, which is um, how much do you want to expose your memory bank to your users? And I think one big learning has been what users think the model should remember are not necessarily what are useful. And especially like users get really frantic and think that their memory bank has to be perfect, which is like so far from the truth. Because in reality, like even if you give a model like 50% memories, 50% of them are junk, 50% of them are applicable, like the models are smart enough now to kind of filter out the noise largely. Um, and so that was like a really interesting thing. And so as a result, we've kind of kept the generation a bit hidden. And like obviously you can go in and change it if you don't like it. Um, but most of the editing of memories happens like when a model will choose to cite a memory in its generation. And then you can kind of hover over and delete. But on the actual generation side, we don't use it a ton. Cool. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of what I've been talking about, but what's next? Um, so, so far now we can understand the users, um, but we want to learn a lot more about your code base. Um, and in particular, like 
we want to have an understanding of the things that happen in your code base outside of just the code because like, you know, we can churn through and uh, embed your entire code base and probably get a decent representation of just what's happening, but there's a lot of things that you do with your code base that, you know, you express in the sidebar like when you're chatting with the agent, but they don't live anywhere. Um, and so we're trying to figure that out basically. Um, Going to be a lot more prototyping and just like, you know, shooting in the dark, but we'll, I'm confident we'll get there. Um, and then with that kind of new set of memories where they can't just be applied all the time in context, um, we need new approaches to including memories in context. And so um, there's some things we've been experimenting there with changing the way that our search pipeline works to include memories, um, but it's all just prototypes so far. Um, and then kind of the North Star we're shooting for is team-wide knowledge where um, the, if, if someone can learn from my mistakes um, that I made with the agent and they don't, their agent won't make that same mistake, like that's the North Star. But it's also like really, really important to get it right because if you start sharing bad memories team-wide, it's like, so, it's a huge degradation of quality. Um, so this is what we're working towards, but you know, we've still got some ways to go. Um, but yeah, I had a Q&A slide, but I think we're gonna save it. Thank you guys.